Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. By the way, my name is Bill Fairman, and I'm with Carolina Capital Management. I always forget to tell people who I am, which is not real bright for someone that's uh, in sales, is it? So uh, make sure you like and share. We have other videos available either up or to the side or down, depending on the platform that you're, you're watching from. So we always get a lot of frequently asked questions. Here's, here's one that I, I love. What are some of the coolest real estate tricks, you know? Well, really there aren't any tricks. It's all about just being creative and figuring out the pain points of the seller and what will work in your numbers and in your goals or perhaps somebody else's goals, because if it doesn't work with you, you can certainly take a, a deal that's viable and actually e either give that lead to somebody else or, you know, you can also make money doing that. I, I like to just do the networking part. If I can help you then later down the road, you can help me with something. But uh, one of the things I like to do on rental pro properties specifically is being able to do what's called a subject to purchase where you're buying the home subject to the current owner's financing. So if you're doing that on a rental portfolio, and as we know, rates are so low that if you're taking over someone else's payments, you can arbitrage the difference between the financing that the current owner has and the payments that you're going to receive from rental. But, you know, make sure you have to have plenty of reserves. You're the one that's now responsible for making those payments. There's one thing that has to be disclosed is that on every single mortgage note, to a consumer, there is a clause it's called a do on sale clause. So that person can sell you that property, but that note holder, the bank has the right and the opportunity to call that note due and payable upon the sale. So, because they didn't underwrite you, they underwrote the borrower that is now selling you the home. However, in all my time in the mortgage business, I've never, actually seen a bank execute the due on sales clause. They're just happy that somebody's paying it, right? <laughs> as long as you're making the payments, that's good. And you need to make sure that the borrower or, or now the seller signs a form that allows you to have permission to get the mortgage information from uh, the current mortgage holder, because they're going to send out updates. You're going to need to, you know, know what your payoffs are going to be. If they change any payment structure, you know, taxes and insurance are usually part of the mortgage. So any updates, if it's going to, if that loan is going to be sold to another lender, you you're the one that needs to get all that information and they're not going to speak to you if you're not the one on the note, but if you have uh, a form that's filled out that's signed by the by the seller that gives you permission to get any information that you want on their account. Uh, that's, that's acceptable. So that's a great way to take over somebody's payments. So essentially you're putting a little bit of money down you're taking over payments and then now you're going to rent the property out and you're keeping the difference between, you know, the rent and what the mortgage payment plus ongoing maintenance and stuff is. So it, that, that's a great way to do it. You're not having to buy and then turn around and refinance it. So thank you so much for joining us. If you really like what you heard, you want to see some more, switch over here or here <laughs> or perhaps there. There's more episodes, but they're somewhere. Yeah. I think Click they're, it on. They're up. By the way, subscribe and like us as well. Please.